will be donated to another nonprofit organization that requests such items. Beginning October 1, 2013, STRAC will be trying out, as of yet, to be decided fundraising activities that will place an undue burden on the property owners, the staff, and volunteers of the organization. The STRAC Emergency Food Pantry, Prescription Assistance, and Document Programs will continue to operate as long as financially feasible. On behalf of STRAC, I wish to express our sincere appreciation to all those who have either donated items or monies or volunteered their time to help the thrift store program exist for the last eight years. Rest assured, we will continue to help those in need for as long as we can and welcome suggestions on fundraising activities that better suit our organization given the limited physical and financial capabilities. Teresa Hinojosa, Strike Founder and Executive Director. Ms. Hinojosa, I would like to stand and applaud you for all that you have done for the community. My name is Bill Hutchinson with McCoy's Building Supply, and of course we initiated that annexation, so I just wanted to make myself available if there were any questions. Thank you.
legal counsel, is that correct? I think it is. The, the point's made is that this is a motion, this is a discussion by counsel, by counsel, of the counsel, and I think that's the way that the motion was handled. If I'm understanding this, we have a comment. Is there a resolution on the table? Whose ruling is this? I'm sorry? What ruling is this from? What? I didn't hear your question. What rule? This is basically Robert's Rules of Order. In other words, there's a motion and a second, and there's a discussion on the matter, and my recollection of what happened was that you had a comment to make, which you were within your rights to do, and comment on the motion, but ordinarily it wouldn't be citizens' comments, it would be just your comments as a counsel person commenting on the motion. And the citizen comments would also be striking? No, I mean if some citizen wanted to make a comment, they'd certainly be entitled to it. Well, I'm not suggesting we strike the citizen's comment. Just to strike Ann Councilwoman Castillo in that statement. I thought I heard you say also Mr. Gonzalez. No, I did not. It was specifically you as a voting member of the council were making comments that was discussed with Mr. Gonzalez, and clearly within his rights to speak up at that, and it should be reflected in the minute. Okay, would that change? Did I have a motion? So motion. Okay. May I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
time. So that line has been zero up until this point. So now it shows that they received the time amount. Uh, again, very little expenses in court, police, all salary and benefits. Street departments uh, still have one position vacant. So it is slightly under budget uh, due to the vacancy. Parks and Rec Department, we want, again, has vacancy, so their salary lines are running extremely low. And we'll start seeing a little bit more expenses coming with May and June, based on the following the summer months. Swimming pool is, at this point, 36.6% spent. And again, that, this is April report, so you'll start seeing increase of expenditure there, which is mostly the salaries. And they did, we did work on the sand. I'm not sure I don't understand how the pool works. I haven't been out there, but it's a filtering, it's a filtering system. There's a lot of sand, so that was replaced and cleaned. So that line was, uh, was up. And water sewage. I don't know, any questions on the general fund? Anybody have anything? Pretty, pretty slim this month. Is really Water and sewer financing sources total seven hundred eighty-five thousand six hundred ninety-five. Water residential commercial and commercial total four hundred ninety-one nine hundred two of that amount. Just a slight increase of three thousand eight hundred fourteen compared to the last period last year. Uh, April residential bill billing in comparison to last year is still falling at that same. We've been about fifteen thousand difference from last year in total. It's still from October of the previous year. Um, the uh, me, penalties for this this time we had penalties uh, calculated on the tenth as always. Four hundred thirty-seven customers out of original two thousand five hundred and three bill of the first cutoff penalties were calculated on the twentieth, and out of the four hundred thirty-seven we had one hundred and eleven hundred eleven that received cutoff doses. Pretty pretty good. Uh, utility fund expenditure $712,061 in a budget of only 43.6% spent. Um, we're working on a budget amendment for water sewer. We've talked about this several times and we we had a budget we had a budget workshop and it, the main focus is water and sewer. We are going to be splitting out. Right now your budget is all one department. Um, it's going to be split out into an administration department, a water and sewer department helps in seeing costs for the actual individual areas. And they have had very little expenditures in the month of April other than their chemicals and sewer disposal fee and electricity. Mm -hmm. Debt service, the service fund is the other portion of property tax INS. Total collected in the property tax for the year. Uh, 408,626 in month of November is historical. April collection is only 9,518. And that's kind of also something that's your large amount of money. That money's, we have to watch that cash flow to help pay for expenses through the remaining year. Sales tax is another large cash flow. So uh, debt service payments are in March and September for your principal. So we'll be seeing some larger payments coming in the August Any questions? That was sounding like a broken record. So the same every time. <laughs> and then we also have in, in your packet the uh, fund balance listing that we've been including. And this fund balance, this has actually updated with the ending the beginning fund balances have the audited numbers now. Originally, it's been so this unaudited now we're changed to the audited. And then this time I included, which is actually number B, I just kind of jump, we really meant for it to be up there. Some information on sales tax and reports just to help just a visual to see your sales tax. And it's really nice to see the increase in sales tax. That's going to help the city a lot. Questions? 
One question. You said that we're at, I think your number was 58% based on the number of months, 58.33. Mm -hmm. When I look at um, sales tax, it shows us that 57.4% of what was budgeted. Are we on target to meet that budget amount, even though that's off just a little bit? We're actually over. I'm looking on the second page of the sales tax report. When we look at the uh, second column, it talks about current percentage of budget collected. The total says 57.4%. That's less than 58.33. Secretary scheduled us on that Friday the 7th 
We spent some time, and then Mr. Rosenberg volunteered some time with me the following week. We'd gone through all the documentations from the initial incorporation in 2010 to present. The IRS was sending their wrappers to the Civic Center. The Civic Center doesn't have a post box. So the, the forms that were required by the foundation were never sent to the IRS, and nobody, to include the city manager, who is also our only registered agent with the state of Texas and with the IRS, Mr. Rosenberg, who was part of the original paperwork with the power of attorney, we've got no information from them. We never received the documents that the state comptroller has stated that in 2011 and 2012 was received. I will tell you, though, that between Mr. Hogg and Mr. Rosenberg and his staff, we have a plan. It's called our start over plan. We've got to start from square one and file all the paperwork once more. This time, because of lessons learned, we know the pitfalls of our predecessors. We know what has to be filed, what format it has to be filed, and all of the dead trees that we're going to have to do paperwork with to get the foundation back in good standing. And I'm sure that the next agenda item is what I just briefed is going to have some consequences for uh, y'all's consideration I would also like to point out that there are but one, that's good English, you know, there are no other records except one document that in December, after the council appointed me as a director, that Andy and uh, Jocelyn gave me, there's no other records that the city has anywhere dealing with the Parks Foundation. We will make an attempt as we go forward. I asked uh, Sherry at that meeting that we had on that Friday, do I need to buy a two terabyte USB hard drive and keep our data and make it available to the city so that in the future, we don't have to go through these pitfalls of what the previous board had to go through. As a request, if you know who, after Steve Trevino and his board, who were the secretary? Who was the vice president? Who was the treasurer? Please have them contact me or, or Mr. Johnson or somebody if they have any records, any records at all, we'd love to get it. Questions from the council? I have some questions. I asked uh, the city manager to kind of bring us up to speed too on what he had in records of time. Do you have anything to add? No, councilman. Uh, <clears throat> don't pretty much sum, summarize the situation so that he may uh, be aware of the issue. I sent an uh, email notice to all the council members in regards to what was occurring. Uh, Mr. Jones has been instrumental in bringing everybody together to try to uh, rectify the situation. There was a, uh, a turnover in boards during that time frame and many board members involved and uh, Record keeping, like you said, wasn't one of the, the best uh, issues taken. The, the major thing that was uh, that had occurred was that the, the correspondence was going to the center, and the center has no post office box. It does not receive one of everything to include the, the uh, fire department and any other organization has a box here at City Hall. So we talked about uh, how are we going to receive correspondence, how is Mr. Jones and his board going to get correspondence. We enlisted uh, legal in regards to uh, the uh, paperwork that's required, and I think he may have some information on how that's going to proceed. Mr. Jones, members of the council and the mayor, uh, I think Mr. Jones has summarized that the short version is uh, I have. A colleague who's a registered lobbyist who used to work with Bob Bullock, and I've enlisted his support to go back and figure out how they could assess this attack when they have no records of us. And I'm going to try to explain to you how that happened. We've done an open records request, and we have the response. They have no records on us, but they assessed a $1,400 bill. So that's the point we're at, and we want to see if we can figure out how you do that, and more importantly, how you back it out. 
can get that backed out. We can do a lot of things to get into that started. That's where we're at. Do we have a, a timeline where? I expect to hear back on it this next week. Chuck is usually very, very quick on responding to me. Um, he was raised by Bob Bullock uh, at Bob Bullock's knees and knows that agency in and out. If anybody can do it, Chuck can get it done. Uh, it turned out kind of ironically, just anecdotally, that when I called him, he was returning from a trip to North Carolina, and he said he had three commercial accounts with the same incident. And so apparently this is not an exceptional circumstance. This happens in other contexts. So I said, Chuck, here's the fourth one. I need an answer right away. And, and I think the, the second question that relates to timeline is to reestablish their for lack of a better word, credibility with the Secretary of State's office and their tax exempt status. Do we have an idea of what that is going to take in in terms of time and in terms of expense? Well, if, I can, if I can get Chuck to do what he's promised to do, which is to work on it next week, it takes a simple letter from the controller's office to the Secretary of State's office saying the matter either is an error Well, clearly, 
uh, Mr. Rosenberg's solution, if it's possible, would be the, uh, preferable to, to the paperwork. Uh, but it does bring up some other interesting questions about the Parks Foundation and some challenges that we may or may not face. And, and Councilor, I'm going to lean to you on this first one. Uh, we have been collecting a parks fee uh, for some time now, and according it's to October first, 2011, you're talking about the water. Yeah, and that parks fee is to be, for lack of a better word, is administered by this parks foundation. With their advice, I think it's when you're Yeah, or, or concurrence. Uh, do we have it? Are we going to face any challenges for that collection over this time period? That was not technically part of the foundation. Okay. Uh, then, I think Laura would agree. Yeah, I think yes. <clears throat> okay, just one of those hiccups that I didn't want to, to have to suddenly buy it. And then the next question, and, and this is maybe asking the question or, or, or closing the door after the horses escape. Uh, you say there are no records. Uh, from what I understand, a significant amount of money is. Uh, funneled through the Parks Foundation. I, I was concerned over that. Uh, according to the bank statement from Wells Fargo, there's only been, for the last two and a half years, $4,300. The city made a donation of $7,000 uh, early January of 2011. The, the checkbook shows that the foundation gave $3,000 back. There was a $38 bill for the uh, box of checks and again whoever the secretary or treasurer was we don't have the checks and we'd like to have them. Uh, there was an additional amount of money that was sent to the city into the city pool cash account and then from uh, back to the foundation's Wells Fargo account was $2,275 deposit and there's been no activity on it except the, the, the last Bank segment of 2012 showed five dollars less than the, the previous December statement, and I have no account for that five dollars. Well, so we have some money has been going through this. I saw it. Some money's been going through this account since it's been uh, forfeited. Forfeited? No. 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 We come back to your statement. You said the city gave the Parks Foundation seven thousand dollars. Yes. And then the Parks Foundation gave the city back thirty-eight hundred dollars. It's about three thousand. I have to get my books. What was that for? Do we know? Well, if, if you look back in the 2010 time frame, there was a holiday extravaganza. There was an article that Mr. Gibbs sent me the link to, where it showed the previous foundation president, Mr. Uh, Stephen Trevino, with a large check for four thousand dollars. I think that the profits from because in that article it mentioned that uh, Mayor uh, Tejada said that they had profited nearly $16,000 of which a check went to the Girl Scouts for $11,000, $4,000 supposedly was coming to the Parks Foundation. So I think that in the initial account set up for the Parks Foundation that we currently have, the $7,000 was the oversight and that was returned to the city pool cash fund, whatever that money was. And then there were some other bills that I guess that came through with due. Again, the only thing I can tell you is that from the statements from Wells Fargo, I can only give you the dates and the amounts and where the money came and where it went. Well, I had heard, I don't know, I had heard that from that money they had turned around and went ahead and re booked the next extravaganza so they pulled that money from the Parks Foundation. Is that true, Mr. Dustin, or do you know, are you aware of it? I'm not aware of that, sir. That was the Parks Foundation. And, uh, uh, and to me, it's kind of funny that there's no record. And uh, to me, I had heard. Well, one of the one of the members of the Park Foundation had told me that that money, as soon as they pulled it in, they pulled it out. And there was a, a prior marriage, so we could just go from there. So uh, uh, I think there's more to the story that they know where that money and people know what what went on and what didn't go on. But, uh, how we can go to, to investigate more minutes or more where that money went, but that money did was pulled out because one of the members had told me that this parent had came by and said, Let me have this money, and they pulled it out at that day. But we can look into more into that. Well, I don't have it in my book, but I will also tell you that again, because.
because Mr. Uh, Gibbs provided me with the, the website, uh, there was a request by the Wilson County News for documents to be provided that went all the way to, I believe, the Attorney General to where the documents were finally uh, produced for not only the extravaganza in 2010 but in 2011. But the foundation checkbook that I have, or the actual statements that I have, didn't start until January of 11. And there's no money in there, like I said, there's $7,000 initial, the, the cost of the checks, money was given back to the pool cash. Um, there was one other bill, I can't remember, I can't find my little spreadsheet that I provided to uh, Chris. But there's no money above that $4,300. I mean, it has been stagnant. And in fact, Wells Fargo even stopped charging the $8 a month service fee. And it's been stagnant until we, uh, well, I don't think she's deposited yet. The only other money that, that I know today is we got $1,400 on market days when we did the uh, survey for the park on a market day after we joined the change. So what is the amount of money we have in that park foundation? $4,300. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the other, other piece of, of dollars that are to be administered by the Parks Foundation, which is the, the Parks Rec Fee Fund, and uh, that's what's the balance in that fund. Well, I'll do that one. I can explain that, Mr. Miller. That money is public funds. The Recreation Parks Department of the city, with our concerns, <coughs> would come to Mr. Dawson with a budget amendment, then would come to the city council to do any expenditures that money. The original thought, and again, Ms. Rosenberg, if I say anything wrong, jump right in the whip, you would have whip. The original purpose was to have a source of matching funds so as to go out and get other grant money. Some cases, if you've got 20%, you get people that will give you 80%. So that money, <coughs> we can't spend it. It has to go through Mr. Johnson from the Parks Department, the city employee, Mr. Uh, Alex Trevino is the supervisor. He would have to come to the city manager, do the budget amendment, present it to you folks, you folks would make the budget change, and away the money would go. Theoretically, it would be in the minutes. It has to be. We cannot spend it. Okay. It's not our money. It's taxpayers' money. And if, if you need, if need reference, that's city ordinance 285. I'm certain as we go through this correction, or as you call it, your step-by-step -step plan, uh, we will also identify uh, accounting processes so that those kinds of financial reports come back to the council and that we have the record keeping appropriate uh, as a corporation of the city of Florida. I'm certain that the city manager will ensure that we don't have uh, challenges to missing meeting minutes or reports or appointments and that sort of things in the future. And I'm looking forward to uh, a report from uh, our counselor as to his progress on this and, and then what next steps will need to be taken to get the Parks Foundation reinstated. Uh, I would ask you to uh, remind everybody what the, the mission of the Forest Hill Parks Foundation is. The mission of the Parks Foundation, as the, the incorporation document said, is to reduce the financial burden on the city's uh, budget plan by enhancing the facilities and increasing the awareness of the, the well-being of the population and the residents of the city. To me, that means like what we did uh, when we 
repainted the facility at the, the River Park golf fields. We were in the process of trying to take Lou's suggestion at the very first meeting when he was our shepherd and, and told us at the very beginning in January about Pecan Park. We want to renovate uh, Pecan Park. We would like to start a reforestation process. We'd like to get somebody to come in with an irrigation process. And we would love to, in the Air Force, we call them an action GP4 party like an action DP board party restrooms and get started. But we can't do that without, as you guys have heard me say, I need your money. Well, right now, I can't ask for your money until we get the paperwork and the Secretary of State allows us to continue to transact business. Any and everything that we do is to support and in some places ameliorate the burden of those six guys that were in your park department. I'd like to see the, the, the facility, uh, the bathhouse at the pool, actually take people apart. But would, you're talking about deep pockets and lots of money. I would encourage uh, you and, and our city staff in, in the budget process that we're going through, uh, one of the things that we talked about today was setting some capital uh, repair and replacement projects over the next three to five years to begin to incorporate some of those priorities of the Parks Foundation who have worked hand in hand with our Parks Department to get those included in, in our budgeting process for the coming years. Well, that's another piece of information for not only the council, but for the residents. Uh, Mr. Jocelyn and I attended a Sarah watershed for Wilson County meeting this past week. And I can't remember Jeff's last name, but I've got his business card. He's with SRS Corporation out of uh, Austin. He's interested in your Northcrest. He's interested in, I'm sorry, Mr. McCoy, he's rep, uh, McCoy has walked out, but I understand that McCoy is looking to donate some land over by the Seguin Branch to the city. Uh, Jeff was saying that his job in life with the company that he works for is to find the grant money so as to do things for parks. So the more that I can network with people and find the belly buttons, I don't mind getting face to face with belt buckle to belt buckle with anybody and plead the case for this city and, and try to get the parks up to speed because you, know, you guys only get so much money. And without money, it's real. I'm told that uh, Mr. Butts himself gave a quarter million dollars to San Juan. I'd like to pursue that to figure out how I can touch base with that philanthropic side of him and not his corporation, as you mean. We're getting a, uh, every citizen in the city is receiving a dollar ticket out from their, from the, to go to the Parks Foundation, correct? To the Parks? To the Park we uh, To the Park we uh, An account just specifically for that. Uh, we can only spend the collaboration of the Parks Foundation. The city and the, and the, uh, what does that do with what what's going on right now with the forfeiture of the? Nothing. Nothing. Is, is it just another box? Just like a hotel, hotel pack? It's actually fund number 460. 460. Recreational fee. It's not the interest. It's not the interest. In fact, if Mr. Trevino needed to, to use that money, like I said earlier, he would bring a budget change to Mr. Dawson, we would do a budget amendment, present it to council, and you guys would vote on it and go with it. Because he does have an operational budget, but again, that's part of the purposes that the foundation was set up, is to ameliorate those financial burdens on the city. Any questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Doug, may I ask currently, how many signs are required on the account? Is it one or two? I've all I'll say two, but without a checkbook, I haven't gone over there and, and signed. I, I would hope it's work. two because that gives you an extra. Right. Any other questions? Mr. Doug, I think you're doing a good job, a great job. Mm -hmm. And I want to appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't forget the other seven.
love you guys in, in April when I updated you. Thank God y'all playing the folks that you have because you got some uh, blank busters that are working hard for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Okay, next we're going to have, and I wonder if we can have this, uh, item 3D, the Wilson County Patriots check presentation to the Florida Parks Foundation. Ms. Jones? Mayor, City Council, residents, you're absolutely correct. Um, two weekends ago, the Wilson County Patriots sponsored, along with residents, non-residents, a fundraiser um, at Finders Keepers. We did a bake sale, we did a donation jar, and we also did a flea market. We collected, so far, $1,030 for the Parks Foundation. Um, when this came to light, originally I was here to do a check presentation to them. And now with these concerns, um, although the checks are made out to the Floresville Parks Foundation, there is a concern regarding, regarding the legitimacy and the status of the account and what we can do that will be in a, okay as far as um, being good watch keepers of everybody's money that's contributed. We, we certainly don't want to go down the path that happened before. Um, and I'll probably have to go to legal counsel. I did not bring them with me because I knew there was going to be some concerns. Um, the sad thing is we, we were so joyful about what we've done and so happy. And now there's this cloud.